everyone, welcome back to Game Vine, and my name is David, and welcome to another Fast Five, the Top 5 Dwarven Board Game Edition. Now, I have been hooked on Dwarves since my very first exposure to the Fantasy Realm. Now, when I played my first D&D &D game, I was a Dwarf, and I also had a, a Dwarven friend who was a greedy Dwarf, and he got caught up in the journey counting his gold, and we had to leave him behind. I was a Berserker Dwarf, and I had armor that has spikes all around it and I just ran up to a horse and I tried to grab it and I rolled terribly and I died so I had to re-roll a dwarf so that after that experience I was hooked on dwarves I love the way that they're built I love how sturdy they are and anytime I could play a game that has a dwarf in it I'm gonna give it a shot even if it's crappy I'm gonna have my biased opinion and go into it optimistically it's it's something I can't get over so why not do a Fast Five for Dwarven board game? So as you know, with Fast Five, I only have one minute to talk about these games, just to get the word of mouth out there. So without further ado, let me start with the honorable mentions. I snuck two more games on my Dwarven list, because why not? The first one I have here is a trick-taking game by Yellow, and it has dwarves in it. So I like trick-taking games, I like dwarves, let's match them up. Yes, it's going to be a win. It's at least worth a mention. It's uh, basically, you're trying to advance on this track to get to the Dwarven King, and you're trying to get tricks. And if you know what that means, uh, well, good for you. If you don't, I, I explain in other videos. I'm sorry, that's an honorable mention. I'm not going to get into too much detail. The next one that I have here is Summoner Wars. Now, I played this with a friend in the past. I didn't want to invest in the big base set but when i seen this uh dual set for cheap it had cave uh goblins and guild dwarves i was like yes give it to me so now i can have the summoner wars experience and this is a fun kind of tactical game where you're moving cards uh, kind of like a miniatures type thing it's really fun if you don't know about it you should check into it so those are my two honorable but honorable mentions now let's get on to number five on the dwarven list let's go before we start the video, a slight caveat, these games are great. They're some of my favorites, and if your game isn't on here, I'm sorry, it's, I just have my preferences. It doesn't mean you have a bad game. But um, some of these games are a lighter uh, game or maybe a different type of game. I wanted to pick different types of Dwarven games from different genres. So a lighter game might be on here, but doesn't mean that I like Summoner Wars any less than maybe that lighter game. And it just means that I want to diversify this list because it is only five games. So with that being said, let me go on to number five here. This is the light game that I was talking about. Now, um, this is from Rather Dashing Games and it is called Dwarven Miner. And it is a gateway game through and through. You are basically a merchant and you're trying to service these dwarves um, to go on adventures. You're getting armor for them and you're getting uh, weapons and you're trying to complete their goals so you can get points in the end. Now, um, this is a dice roller and you're just trying to accumulate materials to you know service the dwarves and get their armor and whatever kind of magical or mithril things that they need because dwarves aren't magical. Um, and then you just complete the goal. It's absolutely light, and I think the reason why I put this one on here because I wanted to put a gateway game on here, and this is a Dwarven game, so it was perfect. I also love the art. These guys um, that are the producers of this game were actually on a ghost um, hunting show, which is pretty neat as well. I used to watch that when I was young. Um, so that was kind of another thing why I like this game, maybe a little biased, but I think this is a good addition, and I, if you haven't played this game, I would say it is a good first time play for everyone. So that was Dwarven Miner, and that was number five. Let's go on to number four. All right, so number four is a game that has dwarfs in it, but it has a whole bunch of races in it, and they're kind of classes as well. This is Small World. Now, if you haven't heard of Small World, um, I would be surprised. This is one of the up and coming games because Again, this is a lighter game, and the dwarfs in here are pretty uh, unique. I like actually picking them because they get um, bonuses for being on the mountains and uh, other stuff like that, and you can get classes um, to help them out. And uh, they aren't uh, like the only class that, that are in here, and they might not even be my favorite class, but they're in here. And I like Small World because it has such a good entry rate, um, and it's colorful. Uh, this is done by Days of Wonder, so they always produce their games beautifully. And uh, this is a simple game of area control. You're putting down your races and trying to take over, and you're uh, putting on other people's races to knock them out and take it over 
their portion of the land and you get coins and the person with the most coins at the end of the game wins. And it's simply just that. Um, and some people might think that it's too light for them, but I think it's a good game. It also has an app and I, the replayability is vast because you can switch out those races with different classes. I know it was longer than a minute, but that is Small World. Let's go to number three. All right, number three on my list is a game that, again, just has one dwarf in it, but it isn't about dwarfs entirely. It is another dice roller like the fifth game that I have on the list, but this is a little more intense than that. This is a middleweight game, so I wanted to put a good middleweight game, and this is a dra uh, game done by um, Richard Lyons called Dragon's Rampage. Now, you have a dwarf in the game, and he's a cool character in there, and I like playing him, but... I, I like all the races in this game. You're basically, you have three different ways you can win. On the map, you're trying to fight a dragon, or you want to run him from the dragon, or you, uh, I think the other way is, I, oh dang, I can't remember, but I'm not gonna get into it, but there's a third way. Uh, I should have briefed up on the rules. Um, but you're rolling dice, and some of the dice lock, and uh, the way that this kind of mechanism is played out with the cards and the abilities. Richard Lanius does it so well. I mean, again, he's one of my favorite, and uh, it was kind of a no-brainer, and I think this game is underappreciated. So this is one that's done by Eagle Games. It's highly produced and well-designed and underappreciated. So I recommend go out and pick this one up if you see it for a good price. Or if you don't, go pick it up anyway. I turned the buzzer off. I don't care. I spoke longer, now let's go on to number two, and I'll try to shorten it up, but maybe I'll speak longer again. There you go, bonus seconds for you. Let's go on to number two. All right, so number two again has a dwarf in it, but it's not entirely about dwarfs. But again, if I am playing a game and there's a dwarf in it, I'm just gonna pick it just cause. I don't care what his ability is, I'm gonna get it. This is Defender, uh, Defenders of the Realm. It is back-to-back -back Richard Lanius, and this is a, it's getting older, but it's um, a good a cooperative game. It's set in a fantasy realm with good miniatures, uh, decent art, a massive board, maybe a bit complicated or convoluted, but it served its purpose. If you like Pandemic, this is Pandemic in a fantasy realm. You have a whole bunch of minions trying to populate these cities and you have to, um, you know, fight back the blight. There are big bosses that are coming out along with them and if they touch one of your towns, you automatically lose and you really have to work together. And I think the characters in here are really um, different. They're diversified. It's not like, well, I have a barbarian and he's just slightly different than this dwarf. No, they're going to be completely different. So if you like co-op games, you like fantasy games, and you like Richard Lanius like I do, I would go pick this game up. It's a bit pricey, but there are tons of expansions out there as well. Hard to find. All right. So again, I gave you extra seconds. Let's go on to number one and see what the best dwarf game that, in my opinion, won out. Let's go. All right, if you watch the top 10, this game is not going to come to you as a surprise. It is Caverna. Caverna is a game all about dwarves. Why do you think I put it number one on the list? This is a heavy box. Now, this is made um, by Mayday, and it is a collector's kind of game in itself, and this is just a regular game. Um, this is a game designed by Uwe Rosenberg. He did Agricola and La Havre, and it's one of those worker placement games, but it there's not many repercussions. There's always a good move in this game. And it's, um, you're a dwarf and you're trying to make this cool cave and you're mining it with, for rubies and coal and trying to use the, those materials to, you know, get better uh, rooms in your cave so your dwarves can live. But outside, you're trying to build a farm for animals or maybe you're trying to sow some pumpkins or uh, hay. And I know it doesn't sound interesting, but when you, uh, are finished with the game, it you look down at your board and you're like, oh man, I made that. Even if you lose, and I did on my very first game, and uh, I just loved it. I'm turning this off, more seconds for you. I had one of the best experiences that I, I, I've had with a game, and I instantly said, this is my number one game. Because I just loved building my farm, and I, it, there's so many different ways that you can win. You can go all animals, you can go all plants or you can go all rubies you if somebody isn't doing something you can just try to focus on it and you can win out now i just love this game and i'm giving you extra seconds because i love caverna and it's all about dwarves so 
There is my Fast Five Top Five uh, Dwarven board game. And I hope it was informational, and I hope this helps people out there have a great Dwarven board game night, because that's what I'm trying to succeed on this Fast Five list. So, until the next time that I see you, thank you so much for watching today's Fast Five. I've been Dave, and have a great rest of your day, and a great time with all that you play. You heard it here on the Game Vine. Put your axes up, brothers, and let's go pillaging elves. Yeah, we don't like elves. <laughs>